from Kiricho are getting back here in studio to continue the conversation with engineer Joseph Sirol, the managing director of the Kenya Power. And uh, again, whatever you've been saying has uh, quite generated a bit of a reaction. But before you get into that, uh, talk to me about if you have a model family, a household, how much should they spend on power? Thank you so much, Sam. If you have a model family, I think it will all depend on how that model is. Let me use the, the simplest example, the common person. Mm -hmm. If one has, say, four rooms, and in each room, I'm talking about possibly even a village setting, mm -hmm. and each room you have a bulb of five watts, mm -hmm. that would mean the total consumption is just about 20, 20 watts. Mm -hmm. Assume you are using that power or that lighting for five hours. And I'm even assuming a scenario where all the lights are on for the entire five hours. Mm -hmm. That would just be mean 20 times five, which is just 100 uh, watt hours, mm -hmm. or 0.1 kilowatt hours. Mm -hmm. At the very bot bottom of the pyramid, because again, the price of power, mm -hmm. considering domestic, if your monthly usage is between zero and 30, and that one definitely will come under the zero and 30, uh, uh, and 30 uh, bracket, mm -hmm. the cost is 12 shillings. So that would mean on a daily basis, you would just be consuming one shilling and 20 cents. For the five bulbs, turning on for five hours, for the four, four bulbs, mm -hmm. five watts each, mm -hmm. and it's on for five hours. Mm -hmm. Each daily cost is only one shilling and 20 cents. Mm -hmm. So uh, assuming then that person has a fridge, has a cooker, a microwave, they have a television, and maybe a radio, or is it a woofer, or a buffer, whatever it is? Now you've changed the dynamics a bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because definitely that is slightly. With more devices connected, definitely the consumption is going to go higher. Mm -hmm. And based on what devices and even the size, and in this fridge that you are using, mm -hmm. are you even optimizing it? Because one of the mistakes that we do find some when we visit some of our friends who complain at times of eye bills, mm -hmm. is you notice on the fridge, he has put 12. On the freezer, it's at 12. Mm -hmm. So the entire almost 24 hours, the fridges are almost revving like vehicles. Mm -hmm. When possibly just a setting of two would have avoided him paying a very high bill. Mm -hmm. And there are a number of things we could discuss about. But at the bottom of it all is the fact, or what is really um, the area of focus is, mm -hmm. the cost of power is as cheap mm -hmm. as how complicated you want to be. <laughs> At the very basic level, okay. it is very cheap. So let's simplify it so that you're not very complicated. Um, explain to me how, in February 2023, 500 shillings was getting you about 19.5 units, um, if you're using tokens. And the token amount was 245 shillings. Of course, the balance, which is more than 250, was going to taxes and other charges. As of September this year, the same consumer was getting 15.9 units from 500 shillings, but the token amount is now 327 shillings, 44 cents. Thank you, thank what, you. What has just happened? What did happen, Sam, up to the month of March this year, mm -hmm. we had a situation where there was the power, the rate, there was a reduction of 15%. And the, that reduction of 15%, was not driven by any dynamics. Mm -hmm. Or let me, let, let, me, let me possibly set out the facts straight. Mm -hmm. When you look at the cost of power, there are a number of components. There is the, the part that goes to generation. And possibly for the viewers, of the 100 shillings that you pay, for every 100 shillings that you pay for the bill, 65% mm -hmm. goes to generation. What, what percentage? 65. 65%. 65% goes to generation. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, what comes to Kenya Power is only 16%. So for every 100 shillings you pay, 16% comes to Kenya Power to maintain a network that is 290,000 kilometers long and to serve the 9.2 million customers mm -hmm. and all the activities that go into it, meter reading, repairs, at times even having to replace transformers that have been vandalized, mm -hmm. having to replace infrastructure that has been vandalized. So if you look at the cost array, there is a component that does go to generation. Mm -hmm. And when you look at generation again, because that's an area that at times the public need to- no, Before you go there, so where does the balance go? You've given me 65 and- There is also the taxes and levies. What percentage? That would be about 16%. Still have 3% remaining. 
you talk about um, possibly I need to do my math correctly. 65 <laughs> plus 16 is 81. So your balance of 19. You're, you're giving me 16% for taxes. What's the balance? Okay, maybe <laughs> I will need to look at my maths. Okay. But yeah, there, there could be that uh, small difference in my, in my computation. But the whole issue is that really, the bulk of it goes to generation. Mm -hmm. And when you go to generation, the different sources of power, and this is really what the public should get to know, have different pricing. The cheapest is hydro. And then, of course, you have geothermal. Then there is now the variable energy sources. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, you have the thermos, which are the most expensive. What do you mean with variable? Variable energy resources are wind and solar. Power that will vary at times, it's not a base load, it's not constant generation. Okay. It may vary by virtue of a number of factors. Is it the same thing you call the intermittent? Yes, they are intermittent. Intermittent. Okay. Talking about solar, mm -hmm. if a cloud just comes over, it drops. And then the cloud clears, it goes up. Mm -hmm. You talk about wind, when it starts raining, it almost drops to zero. So and take take me back to this uh, the bulk of it sixty five percent going to generation and explaining the different sources. Yes. So how then do you explain that twentieth of July this year same consumer uh, got eighteen point six six units? This is way after the March review. Okay. But a month later or two months later, it has dropped to fifteen point nine one. What has changed? Possibly I didn't I didn't complete my story and I apologize for that. Uh -huh. There was that fifteen percent reduction in tariff, which was not driven by any dynamics. Mm -hmm. But in April, there was a tariff review, which was approved by the regulator. Mm -hmm. And this was what we call a cost reflective tariff. Mm -hmm. So that tariff now takes care of all the components that are meant to be. The 15% reduction was actually a subsidy. Yes. And it could not really be sustained. Mm -hmm. So we had now a cost reflective tariff implemented in April. But there are still a number of factors that do change from time to time. Mm -hmm. And that is actually why the units you get this month may not be the same next month. What are some of the variables? One of the variables is the forex. When that tariff was set, it was based on a dollar rate of a particular, I mean, a particular exchange rate. Mm -hmm. If the exchange rate wasn't, then of course, the cost is going to go higher by virtue of that forex. Another factor, Sam, is the amount of diesel or thermos that are dispatched in a particular month. The amount of thermos dispatched in a particular month will be so much dependent on how much the other generations produce. Uh -huh. And this is, again, like I did mention, uh -huh. the issue of variable. Like when I came from my office, out of the variable energy resources, I'm talking about wind and solar. I'm talking about 4 o'clock uh, today. Yes. They are meant, the total for solar is meant to be 210 megawatts, and the total for wind is 435. But at around 4 o'clock some, we had a total generation which was meant to be over 600, mm -hmm. and it was only 150. So all the wind in the country, which are meant to give 435, all the solars which are meant to give 210, in total, all of them were only giving us 150 megawatts. Mm -hmm. So when you have now such a situation, it is now the thermos, the more expensive ones, which have to be, to be brought in. And that is really a conversation that Kenyans need to know, in the sense that at times there is the feeling or there is the assumption that when we say we have an installed base of 3,200 megawatts, mm -hmm. the thinking of every Kenyan is that you have the 435 wind available all the time. Mm -hmm. The assumption of every Kenyan is during the day you have the 210. The reality is so different from that. Because based, and again, that the hydrology is giving you the, nine, uh, the, nine, the, nine, the 839, of course, geothermal is the one that is really base. If you will always get what it said. Mm -hmm. The hydros would do the same, unless, of course, in times of poor hydrology, like we are experiencing right now. But even for geothermal, like today, there are some plants which are on maintenance. Okay. So that means, again, if you are maintaining them, they are not generating what they are meant to generate. So during such times, uh, Sam, you then have to bring in the more expensive uh, sources to fill in that gap. Otherwise, you, the other option available is to lodge So it. how do you do that? I, I understand there's something you call the National Control Center. Yes, we have a national How exactly control. do you do that? In the National Control Center, on a daily basis, mm -hmm. first of all, what they would do, like for tomorrow, based on historical patterns, they would have a part, an, an assumption of how much is going to be consumed tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And maybe just for, for the sake of the public again, the power consumption in this country is not constant. It keeps varying with the time of the day. 
So you may find that early morning you are using 1,200 megawatts. It may go to around 15, 1,600 around midday, goes maybe to around 1,700, around 5, drops a bit, and then it starts peaking from 6 p.m. Such that by the around 9 p.m. or 7.39, mm -hmm. you have a, a demand of close to two, over 2,000. Mm -hmm. Actually, the maximum demand in the country is 2,170. Now, what does happen is that in, in estimating that, and in now the actual dispatch, they would start with the, what is called the tech or pay, mm -hmm. a power first of all. Once they have completed it and it has not met the demand, they use what is called the merit order. Merit order means bring in the cheapest first. Once you've exhausted all the cheap sources, it does happen, and especially when you start approaching the peak time, is that you've exhausted all the cheap sources, but you are unable to meet the demand. Mm -hmm. Now, you are left only with one option. Do I load shed? that hospital where that load shading might mean a very adverse consequences, or do I now bring in the more expensive sources mm -hmm. to meet that particular demand? We have always opted to choose bringing in these expensive sources to meet that demand. And that's actually why you'll find in any mix for every day, there is an amount of thermos that have to be dispatched. The other factor that does again affect that dispatch sum is that there are what is called different or rather transmission constraints. Mm -hmm. A power that you generate in Sondu will, I mean, there are a lot of losses if you are to attempt to supply another part of the country. And then secondly, especially when you now get to the night and the demand starts dropping, there are challenges of voltages. Mm -hmm. So it again forces you to start dispatching the more closer sources. And that's actually what happens at times for Mombasa, okay. where some part of the day you just have to dispatch the thermos to maintain the voltage levels so that the quality of supply is actually improved in those areas. So what really drives it is, first of all, dispatch the cheapest. But as you go along, you reach a point where the cheapest, you've exhausted them, Mm. and you are not meeting the demand. Okay. So the others have to kick in. And of course, there's a slide that we've been showing that is on the screen that is the source is that presidential task force that was looking into power issues that have been appointed in the year 2021. And it sort of uh, talks about what you're saying, that uh, there's certain, um, th there is a time that is the lowest consumption between 1 a.m. and 5 a.m., but the highest also, actually, actually the peak as, as of that report was 7 p.m. up to about 2,000 megawatts. So you're talking about the power mix, but then again, there are those that say that it appears the dispatcher, if there's such a person within the organization, uh, prefers to dispatch the most expensive. How true is that? And even when you say that take or pay, meaning once a certain organization, which is an independent power producer, has given you power, even if you don't take it, you have to pay, how do you balance that to protect the consumer? Now, first of all, let me dispel that myth that the dispatcher uh, 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 does actions that at times has been perceived out there. Let me point at the outset that we actually have a very professional team. And I really want to even take this, point, this time to really appreciate the Kenya Power Workforce. They are really doing an excellent job. We have a workforce of about 10,000. We, we you cannot rule out that there are few mm -hmm. who, are, who are errant. But at least for the team, which is a national control, I can vouch mm -hmm. that these are professionals, professionals by excellence. And the fact that they have been able to maintain a grid, mm -hmm. uh, some 290,000 kilometers, serving 9.2 million customers, mm -hmm. and of course, given even the existing constraints, some of which that I've mentioned, they are really doing an excellent job. And I salute them this day. But coming back to the issue of how do we protect the customer, I think there has been an under, or rather a perception which is not very accurate mm -hmm. because when people see the power mix, they would assume at times that we are dispatching the thermos mm -hmm. while there is some excess power somewhere that from, say, the cheaper sources that we are not dispatching. That is not, that is not the case. Mm -hmm. We always have exhausted it but still you need more to bring in. And that's why I'm even telling you this evening, which is most unfortunate, that there are parts of the country we are load shedding. I know you mentioned about Kisi. Yes, I had a, I had a feeling that could be a, an issue of load shedding. By virtue of the generation is inadequate mm -hmm. to meet that demand. Why? Because we are not getting a, a adequate wind, and that is the situation that is obtaining. But now coming to the different sources, maybe just again to dispel one of the myths, the, a source as a price structure, so if you now look at the diesel, let me shock you today, mm -hmm. and I think this one will shock the public, that Kipevu 
uh, three plant per kilowatt hour is, is 30 shillings. It's owned by Kenjan. Rabai power is 24 shillings. It's an IPP. So there is this notion at times that is presented mm. or that is projected out there that the IPPs are the criminals in this country. I really want to defend them. And to say that why not for I IPPs even this night, uh, Sam? Right. We would actually be, possibly we'd even have been load shedding this station. <laughs> so so it, it's, really, it's really to the benefit of the country. Mm -hmm. that, and if, even, even if you look back, Sam, mm -hmm. they came at a time when the country was going to face massive load shedding. Okay. I, I think, MD, the question has been, because even if you look at um, the amount of money that goes into paying the independent power producers, I mean, it's, it's quite different because, for instance, I'm looking at the financial year 2021-2022, and Kenjin supplied, uh, if you can get that slide number nine, uh, Kenjin supplied 7,911 uh, gigawatt hours, and that cost the country or the Kenya power 48.4 billion shillings, but at the same time, the independent power producer supplied 4,742 gigawatt hours at a cost of 74.9 billion shillings. So you see, of, of the IPPs are supplying more, I mean, I mean, less, but taking more resources in terms of the payment. So how do you convince the Kenyan, despite the conversation that has been that uh, Kenya power entered into uh, some punitive uh, contracts? Is it about meeting the contractual agreement or is it about service to the people? Now, possibly the, way, the simplest way you could analyze that, Sam, and you'll find you'll actually prove me right, is that if you look at the total power that was supplied, mm -hmm. forget about who supplied it. Mm -hmm. Listed in terms of this was hydro. Out of all those total units, this is hydro. Out of those total units, this is what your thermo provided. Mm -hmm. Out of the total units, this is what thermo provided. Mm -hmm. You will realize that the prices were comparable across the board. Mm -hmm. I, didn't even, I had not even finished my conversation. On the geothermal front, mm -hmm. let me shock you that the cheapest is not even Kenja. It's actually social energy, mm -hmm. which is at 7.1 shillings. Uh, some of the Kenjan plants <coughs> go for 10.44. So the whole issue is that what, what may skew or what may look skewed mm -hmm. is the fact that when you look at the composition of power resources that Kenjan has, mm -hmm. they have a lot of hydro plants and they have a lot of geothermal. Right. They have a few wind, and they have a few um, thermal. In fact, the most expensive thermal in the country is Moroni GT, which is owned by Kenjan. So the whole issue is not the company. It's not the IPP. It is the source. But now, the difference why that happens, um, Sam, mm -hmm. is that the, oh, most of these IPPs are thermal. Mm -hmm. So definitely, the few units that they supply, they supply on the other, on the other border. But when you look at Kenjan, if the bulk, if 90%, for example, or 95% mm -hmm. of their generation is hydro and, uh, and, 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 uh, and geothermal, right. then, of course, if you compare the units vis-a-vis -vis what they are being paid, you are really looking at the cheapest sources, and you will not be comparing with other expensive sources. But if you are to analyze, and uh, by the way, most of the, what is charged is always checked by the regulator. Even what is dispatched. At times when we talk about the dispatcher, we forget that the regulator checks it on a daily basis. All right. To see if there is anything that went wayward or a dispatch that did not follow the expected... So, so when you say the regulator... Um, I'm talking about Ipra. Yes, of course. Yes. But, but does he also allow you to vary how much a unit should cost? No. It's okay. totally regulated. The tariff, the tariff that is provided... I, I mentioned to you that the cost reflective tariff was... was is actually the one which was driven by Ipra. And let me possibly just again to just uh, give, give an explanation. The cost that is normally passed to the consumer is calculated by virtue of what is required to ensure all the generation plants that are required in the country mm -hmm. are taken care of in terms of the cost of running and of course the cost recovery in terms of capital investment. It will also look at all the operational co and m costs for the transmission lights and then finally the retail. So what happens on a, on a yearly basis and even how that tariff was arrived at, the generation plants would uh, forward their requirements to the regulator, mm -hmm. the transmission and then the distribution. The regulator is going to review 
of course, yeah, they, have, they have the expertise okay. to know whether this is genuine or not, and then they are going to approve. The, so the, the tariff that is being used right now is what was approved by the regulator. The reason I'm asking that is because you said that the regulator does not allow you to vary no. the, 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 the price of uh, a unit. No. But then again, I just told you that the number of units you got on July 28th is not the same as September 24th. Exactly. Now, th this was the explanation, that when the new tariff was passed, it was based on a particular exchange rate, and it's again driven by how much thermos were despised. So, so you can vary the pricing based on Forex? No, it, it's not varying the price. The price is the same, but you may use more thermos this month. Like if it rains, and you find you are not dispatching the thermos, then of course, what is then going to be passed to the consumer mm -hmm. is going to be lower from the thermal dispatch. So it's the whole mix. During a month, okay. what, what fulfills the requirements of the consumers may not be exactly the same as the next month. But in that, still the regulator is the one to approve. You'll actually check how much thermos were dispatched this month, and using its tariff, they would know how much that would, would, would account for. So, so that is done every other month? Yes, every month that one is done. And right. no tariff is applied without approval from the, from the regulator. Okay, all right, we'll get uh, to more about this conversation